Hello, everybody, and welcome to Friday Night Magic here at GameSwap Mason, brought to you by Top Deck Productions. This is round two of our modern FNM. We've got Eddie, Eddie Sturgill on Jund and Eric Baldus on probably Ad Nauseam. No humans, that's great. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Back to back humans. Best deck in the format. Okay, well, that's great. Uh, so Eric is playing humans v Chun. Now we get to see a little, th this is different. So last round we got to see humans versus an uninteractive combo deck. Now we get to see humans battle against a very interactive mid-range deck. Jund. Jund has long been considered to be like the fa the very fair interactive deck that's looking to grind out its opponent. And uh, hello. Why are they calling now? Right. To uh, gr yeah, has long been the very has long been seen as the very fair deck. Uh, that tries to break its opponent's synergy and grind out value. So let's see how this goes. Well, I don't. I don't like Eric's hand here. I saw. One, I see one land. Champion of the Parish. Two Mantis Riders. A Reflector Mage, and. An unknown card. Oh man, so if he hits those land drops, that is gonna be pretty pretty crazy. A meddling mage. Yeah, but if he doesn't Oh, if he doesn't he's gonna be super screwed. Yeah, what are you doing? But that's that's the kind of risk you're gonna take with a hand like that. Yep. Eddie looks like he has five lands. Nice deck. Um a blood braid elf and an unknown card, probably a removal spell. And that's Jun for you. Um, and that's Jun for you. Jun plays a lot of a uh, lot of lot of clunky cards. Okay, I think it's a thought seize. So, Eddie fetch shocked for 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 blood crypt because that's a blood crypt, and uh, now we get now we get thought seize. So if I'm Eddie here, I take the meddling mage. Definitely. Yeah, meddling mage is the next play. He's Eric is two turns off from casting any of the other cards in his hand. There's land drop number one. So Eric needs another land. And then he can cast those other cards. Or not. And this is what I was talking about with Jun. Jun being a little clunky is Eddie has put a land into play tapped this turn instead of doing anything. He could have played a land untapped and played the Dark Confidant, but he's decided to put a land into play tapped. Well, he's got to be careful with his life total when it comes to humans. That's it true. Very fast. That's true. Um, the idea with Dark Confidant is that you draw uh, removal spells with it, and that actually saves you life. Is that you... That's true. Yeah, you draw lands with the Dark Confidant, and then removal spells with your regular draw. And it actually ends up saving you life. A goif. Exciting. Goif's a, th goif's a little 3-4. Just, just a little guy. <laughs> yeah. Alright, well, Eric's just ripping him off the top like a champ. How we do. Dude, who needs lands? <laughs> yeah, who needs lands? Just draw two. And two, and two drops. Oh, rest in peace, Goy. I don't, I don't like the chump block there. And another turn, Eddie can have it. Ed, Eddie could have gotten that to a four-five, potentially even bigger. 
And here, this is this is what I'm talking about. Like, all of Eddie's cards cost like two, three, sometimes four mana. Eric's curve ends at three. Yep. All right, this is how Eddie catches back up. All right, so we, we're Bloodbraid Elfing into nothing here because he chose not to cast the Thought Seize. And now we just have a 3 2 for 4 that didn't attack. Oh, no. Eric keeps drawing two drops like a champ. All of his, all of his humans are going to get bigger uh, just for casting this Kite Scale. And then the Kite Scale has an effect. Kite Scale is going to take. Coligan's command, the only card in Eddie's hand that he cares about. And now Eric gets to attack for a million. Yeah, I can clearly see why one of these decks is on the top of the metagame, and the other one isn't. Uh, I've heard it be said that Humans is the new Jund. Mm -hmm. Because it's a very... It's a fair, interactive deck that has good matchups, that has, you know, pretty even matchups against the rest of the field. And, uh, and here we're seeing that. We're seeing Humans beat down a deck that you would think would have a good matchup. So we have more than lethal on board and no blockers right now. And nothing out of Eddie. Yeah. Eddie's got a Thought Seize that he doesn't want to cast and a Dark Confidant that he doesn't want to cast. Okay. That's a mood. Eddie's conceding here. He f he fell behind as soon as <laughs> he fell behind as soon as Eric drew his second land and the nothing but two drops. So there you go. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. But fortune favors those who are prepared. Eric knew what to do with those creatures and how to leverage that to his advantage. So you want to call that luck? You want to call that skill? Anyway. If you like what you're seeing now, or you happen to miss this match, don't forget that we archive all of our replays on our YouTube page at youtube.com slash topdeckproductionstream. So if you're itching to follow us elsewhere on social media, give us a like at facebook.com slash topdeckproductions, and be sure to check out topdeckproductions.com for deck lists, league standings, and more. Speaking of league, Tuesday night is our modern league night, where players get to play for cash prizes. Each week we keep track of the number of wins each player gets, and at the end of the month, first place gets $100, second place gets $50, and third and fourth place each get $25. Now, this is in addition to the store credit that you get for winning. So if you live in the greater Cincinnati area and you're looking to put your money where your mouth is, come check out our Modern League. In order to participate, you have to be a minimum $5 patron at patreon.com slash topdeckproductions, or you can go to the Top Deck Productions website and sign up there. So, out of the human sideboard, I know a lot of lists are playing Arak Champion right now, which is a little 1-1 for a double white. Let's bring up Arak Champion. I like... I like I like talking about this card. I can't. I can't believe this card is seeing play in modern, but it's actually like really good in this deck. It's a uh, one-one for uh, for two white, mm -hmm. and has protection from red and from black. Oh. Yeah. This is a card from Fifth Dawn. Sees play in uh, in Soul Sisters, mm -hmm. which is not a deck. Uh, and has now found a home in humans because, of course, it's a human. Oh well, yeah. Uh, interestingly enough, Mirrodin Block was when they first introduced the creature type human. In spite of it being an artifact set, this is the first time we saw the 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 land the creature type uh, human on uh, on cards. Up until then, it would be a creature and just a cleric or a wizard if it was a human. But this is when they started putting human on creature cards. Anyway, protection from black and from red. Whenever another creature comes into play, you may gain one life. Wow. So this dodges all of the removal from Eddie's deck. Eddie has 
absolutely no way of killing this thing once it's on the battlefield, um, provided that Eric never attacks with it. Now, obviously, he can block with a green creature, but that's it. Eric just has to not block a Tarmogoyf, a Scavenging Ooze, or attack into one, and this will always be on the battlefield. And what that means for Eric is that he has an unlimited supply of life every time he plays a creature card. Um, it's not as good against Jund because it doesn't block all of their creatures. This card's really good against um, Mardu, Pyromancer, Death Shadow, Burn, because it also gets to block. It doesn't really get to block a lot of it. It doesn't get to block all of Eddie's stuff, but it's good here because it dodges all the removal. So I wouldn't be surprised if he brought that in. Other, other than that, I don't know. Human sideboards are always different. The main deck has a pretty much agreed upon 60, and then the sideboard changes from person to person. So I think we see Eddie going down to 6 here. I really hope he's not going to 5. Jun does not mulligan well. Although, to be fair, Jund, there are only like 5 bad Jund hands. Jund almost always keeps their 7. They'll keep, four, they'll keep 5 lands, 2 spells, no problem. All their spells are 2 for 1s. Um, Burn can kill the uh, the Arc Champion by attacking, and they block, and you play Skullcrack. But otherwise, and then of course there's Path and Chain to the Rocks and and the like. So there are ways of Burn dealing with it. But until then, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty powerful card. It's not uncommon um, in. Uh, in human cyborgs, and it pretty much beats the Mardu Pyromancer deck by itself. So it looks it's become like Eric has two noble hierarchs in hand, which is pretty good. Yeah, it's the best one drop in the deck. Um, our, uh, yeah, like a Aethervile, Aethervile is a hell of a card, but it's actually second to Noble Hierarch. Noble Hierarch is one of the best cards in modern, just straight up. It and really is. And Humans is the best Noble Hierarch deck. Well, we've got Eddie landing the turn two Goyf. That's pretty good. But it's uh, just a 1-2, uh, because he only has a land. And Eric doesn't put a lot of cards into the graveyard on his own. That's going to be Eddie's job. Kill creatures, cast instants and sorceries. That's, uh, that's his responsibility. So we're going to run out another Noble Hierarch. And then tap the Noble Hierarchy, played the last turn, and his other land to play a Lieutenant. Thalia's Lieutenant, when it comes into play, gets to put a plus one, plus one counter on all of your humans. And then whenever a human comes into play, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. Which is better than a Lord. Because a Lord, when it dies, all your guys shrink. This thing makes all of the things that when it came into play bigger. So it's, 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 it's like a Lord. And then it, it itself gets bigger. It's like, um... It's... Just, it's um... Champion of the Parish copies 5 through 8, with the additional upside of making the uh, humans that are already in play bigger. Which protects his hierarchs. Makes his hierarchs, yeah. yeah. Means hierarch can get in on the attacking game. Mm -hmm. um, what are we getting out of Eddie? He's got 3 mana. Whenever John has 3 mana, I think Holigan's command. It's looking like it. Yep. Coligan's command. I'd like to see Eddie shoot that for two and make Eric discard a card. And that's exactly what Eddie did. Uh, Eric is going to discard a meddling mage. That's exciting. The goif is actually a 3 4. Goes to three four. Go ahead. I got damage this game. Boys. <laughs> no, um, so Eddie has m misrepresented the board by using the Tarmogoyf dice to say that it's a two three, even though there's creature instant and land. It's actually a three four, but that's Eddie's responsibility. Um, you don't actually have to represent the board state at all for cards like that until you go to damage. And Eddie said two. And so that's that's on him. Maybe he, when he watches this game, you know, when, when we end the game and Eric is at one, 
and Eddie complains about variance, um, he can w go back and watch this game and realize that he missed a point of damage for no reason. But that's okay. Uh, Sometimes we make mistakes, but we gotta learn from them. But we gotta learn, exactly. Yeah, you do not have to... If a creature's power and toughness is, like, innocuous, um, like on cards like Master of Ethereum or Tarmogoy for creatures with prowess, you don't actually have to represent that until you go to damage. And when you do, make sure you get it right. Because if you don't, that's your fault. Um, so Eddie has four mana. You know what four mana means, right? No, I do not. What does that mean? Bloodbraid Elf. Ooh. Eddie gets to cast a 3-2 for four mana and then spin the wheel. He'll reveal cards on the top of, off the top of his library until he hits something with less converted mana cost than the Bloodbraid Elf and then he can cast that card. Spin the wheel. Yes! That's what we're talking about. Bloodbraid Elf into Liliana. See, that right there, that... That is the reason to play Jund. That is one of the more powerful things Jund can do. He has a 3-2 with haste and a Liliana. So Liliana gets to come in, he's gonna minus, and Erica's gonna get rid of a redundant copy of Noble Hierarch and then not attack. Because he doesn't really feel like trading with a Reflector Mage. I would have traded with the Reflector Mage, because now the Reflector Mage is a 3-4, and you don't get to trade with it. Eric didn't even need to necessarily block there. Yeah, he's at 18 life. He doesn't really need to worry about that right now. The Phantasmal Mage is going to copy Reflector Mage, or it can copy the Folly as Lieutenant to make everything bigger. So this is the power of Phantasmal Image. Can we bring up Phantasmal Image? Phantasmal Image was a card that was not in the original Humans list. Uh, they played the Mayor of... Uh, was the, the one that turns into a werewolf. Ooh, now we get the fat going. But, um... They quickly replace that with Phantasmal Image. So, in any given matchup, there's a human in your deck that's better than all of the other humans. Phantasmal Image becomes copies 5 through 8 of that human. Um, Avabruck was the mayor's name. The mayor of Avabruck, which gave all your humans plus 1, plus 1, and they could flip into a werewolf, Phantasmal Image replaced that card because Phantasmal Image is just better. It copies all of your other guys. It can copy any of your guys. So if there's a, if you want another meddling mage, there's Phantasmal Image. You want another Kaisko Freebooter, Phantasmal Image. One of your humans is better than all of the other humans in that matchup, and Phantasmal Image lets you copy that. So. The downside of Phantasmal Mage is when it becomes another, when it becomes a target of a spell or an ability, it just auto dies. Now, the thing about that is, most of the things that would kill, like Phantasmal Mage, would just kill it anyway. Most of the things that tar would target it would probably just kill it anyway. Um, it's in, it's it's really funny when you kill a Phantasmal Mage with just by just targeting it with something else. Like um, in Mirror Matches, they use the card Whirler Rogue. Uh, to kill opposing Phantasmal Images. If you play a deck like Infect, you can target the Phantasmal Image with one of your pump spells, and that'll kill it. Yeah. Um, even if the Phantasmal Image is like, say, a... Uh, a Reflector Mage, a uh, Militia Bugler, or a Mantis Rider and has three toughness, Grim Lava Mancer can kill Phantasmal Image just by targeting it. But most of the time, stuff like Path and Bolt and Fatal Push, those things were going to kill it anyway. Um, I was talking about Arak Champion earlier. When you make Phantasmal Image a copy of Arak Champion, it just gets pro-black and pro-red, which means that it can't be the target of those kinds of spells anyway. Yeah. It's really interesting. I like Phantasmal Image, though, because I can very nicely... 
ping it with ballista. Yeah, and that'll just kill it, even if it has more toughness than that. So there are Absolutely. things that can target it that wouldn't kill it normally and just kill it. Because it's an illusion. It's not really there. It takes the form of a creature and makes you believe that it's there. So Eddie's just trying to stay alive here. Um, Eric, Eric is swinging for three a turn in the air. Neither player can attack on the ground, but Eric has a flyer, so good on him. Uh, Eric plays flyers and Eddie doesn't. He who controls the sky wins. So Eddie just bought himself another turn because of scavenging ooze. Scooz is quite, I mean, quite the friendly guy when it comes to helping. Another land. Yeah. I can agree to that. Both both players are agreeing at how powerful humans is, and this is against Jund, a deck that's supposed to have a lot of creature removal. Doesn't matter. All of Eric's creatures do things when they come into play. They get immediate value and then can easily be replaced. Humans plays more removal than Jund has. Re uh, humans plays more creatures than Jund has removal. So if, as long as humans can keep up and get ahead of Jund's removal, there's not really a lot of, that Jund can do about it. Uh, humans has the ability to outgrow Jund's creatures and can attack in the air. Yep. So that's going to be a loss for Eddie. Um, we'll definitely try and get our backup match on. They might be in the middle of the game, but when they're done, we can get them to scoot over. So we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back momentarily.